think in 1977, uh, Charlie. Ahern did the show called The Arcade Show, which a bunch of us, Rob and I, were in. And Rob and I did this sort of X and Y international artists adaptable to your services. And then we went to Holland for a year and, and Cordova and um, De Apple and did a bunch of performance uh, film installations there. And then I came back in December of 77, the beginning of 78. At that point, I sort of knew a bunch of people like Michael McClard, Liza Bear, Betsy Sussler, Diego, because we went to school together, um, uh, James Nares, Tim Burns, uh, Robert Cooney. I met the Ahern brothers, Charlie and John, um, Becky Howland, and uh, Andrea Kellard, and few others, I'm trying to think. Oh, well, there's so many of us, you know, you want to was, leave anybody out. Was there, was there a particular um, moment when it coalesced into the formulation of the idea of co collab and... Uh, well, the sort of the first thing, I mean, I think Charlie, you know, with the arcade show, we sort of went, well, this is fun, doing it as a group. The Weber show was like that. It was first the Invitational and then we changed it to the move show and we moved it somewhere else and it was a bunch of the same people and then um, Betsy and Betsy Sussler, Eric Mitchell, Michael McClard and James Nair sort of but the three of them had started something called the X, Ma X Motion Picture Magazine and it was just a short a very small one and we all had been wanting to do something, and I remember Michael and Betsy came to the meeting and went, you know, we just made a magazine. It was pretty small, but they just made a magazine. And we all went, let's do stuff together. Like, you know, let's, let's make art together. Because, you know, nobody was really showing, you know, the galleries were, I was showing a lot of films, but the galleries weren't showing art like that you know and we wanted to we just wanted to make things as a group because it just seemed exciting the fox had already had three meetings or three you know the fox magazine with kasuth and sarah charlesworth and a bunch of other larry wiener and stuff and they had these huge meetings like hundreds of people show up for i remember going to three of them and then we'd see the judge and dance group you know with yvonne rayner and robert morris and trisha brown and um, so we'd seen like, you know, we'd heard about the Oldenburg store, I had a storefront, <laughs> you know, so we started thinking like, well, we should do stuff, like other people have been doing stuff as a group. And um, when they showed the X Magazine, we went, let's do a magazine. So, you know, so we also got the earlier group of people got involved in doing a magazine. At the same time, um, we needed to raise money for it. So. I had the I had Five Bleecker Street and which was a storefront and Robin had Five Ninety One Broadway where he and Jackie lived and um, so um, one of the first the first show actually Diego had gone to Robin Winters in I think November of seventy seven and said to Robin I want to do the Batman show so they put on the Batman show and then. You know, Robin was back from Europe at this point. We'd finished the X and Y stuff and we were both back and um, he and Diego did the Batman show and then we, he and I sort of went, well we've been doing all these shows in Europe, let's do shows, joint shows in our loft. So I did the Income and Wealth show and Robin did the Doctors and Dentists show. <laughs> so, and at the same time we sort of we invited everybody we knew, which and then they brought friends. So that's how it sort of that was sort of the beginning of knowing more and more people from basically the Whitney program, the San Francisco Art uh, Institute, and the Chicago Art Institute were sort of three key places. But other people like Joe Lewis showed up at the Manifesto show. I don't know how he heard about it. <laughs> you know, like people just sort of would drop in. And um, the, so the Five Bleecker, the 
in the 591 Broadway, we each did three shows. After the Income and Wealth of Doctors and Dentists show, we, at the same time, we had the X Magazine Benefit, um, in which we have a film of it actually, sort of. And the X Magazine Benefit, we invited like Diego got a bunch of um, bands together, like a DNA. James Chance and the Contortions, uh, Boris Police Band, six bands, I can't remember the other ones. But, um, and we took those proceeds, split part of it with the bands, but they were pretty generous because a lot of them were in the sort of group. And then we used that money to make the second X magazine. Where was that benefit part? part um, the and benefit was, the was that, you know, we're millennium. Was or is a 77, is it 77 or 66 uh, Fourth Street, East Fourth Street? It was in the Puerto Rican neighborhood space above the Millennium, and so I had been going to Millennium, so I sort of knew the guys in the Puerto Rican group, and I uh, went and asked them if we could rent their space, and they were really nice. It was a big space, which is now La Mama, and so they said, "Take hey, you know." Here it is, you know, just clean up afterwards. <laughs> and so we did. I mean, and we invited everyone we knew, packed the place, and um, took all the proceeds and then made X Magazine, the first, the second one. And then a year later, we made the third one, and, which is a brick wall and a cover. And what was the, the meeting that you were describing earlier? Um Oh, that was one of the early collab meetings, which we didn't have a name yet. And it was the very first one that I remember. It was really Michael, Betsy, and Eric saying, we made X Magazine. This seems like a great idea. We met a few more times in people's lofts. And they had big lofts over in the Tribeca area. Who, who organized the, 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 uh, who, who said, let's have a meeting? A lot of us were friends, so we would, if, I, th I forget exactly how the first one happened. Maybe you know, Betsy and Michael and I were talking about it because they had done the... And James had been at it. I think maybe the first ones were James's or J Street or... I, there was this woman had a huge loft over there and I think hers was really the... She was friends with Jackie and Michael and James and... Um, And what so, about um, Stefan Ein's um, store on Mercer Street? Was, Mercer? was that also a yeah, place that was where, yeah we were you met later or, or I think a little later. Like I was trying to remember when Tom took me over there early on and said this is a great place, and it might have been like might have been seventy seven, seventy six. It's hard to quite remember somewhere there. And Stefan had a show up, and that's how I met um, uh, Walter Robinson and Etta Diak. And um, I had actually met Uli Rimkus and Chris Kohlhofer in Germany when Rob and I were staying in Holland because Rob and I was friends with Christoph. And then they moved here. Um, so, so, and they were friends with Stefan. I'm not sure how Christoph became friends with Stefan. They're both from Germany. Maybe they knew each other there. So Stefan, you know, I remember going, it was mostly shows about his work and occasionally some other German artists in Three Mercer. And I think Tom did a show there, Otterness. Um And they were, you know, they're nice. I like Stefan's work. It was, it was, you know, I think it was, it was, you know, it seemed a little apart at the time, but not, you know, but Tom may be one of the first ones that he showed from the collab group, which wasn't collab yet. <laughs> you know, it wasn't quite collab. Mm -hmm. um, and then later, I think after collab was started, Stefan did Fashion Moto, but it came more like 78, 79. So the interest initially was was to do do things together, sort of in in the absence of real good venues to to show, to exhibit, to, yeah. to sell, I guess. Too. Nothing was selling either. Remember, the, the city was burned out. 
the galleries couldn't sell anything, so they couldn't take on new artists. It wasn't like what happened in the beginning of the 80s when things switched and money came in. So there really wasn't, it wasn't really the galleries' fault. They, they couldn't sell what they had, you know, it was tough enough for them. But also I think just the interest in why, like, Bessie was involved with a group called Night Shift and Robert Cooney and Lindsay Smith and a bunch of, um, and they did um, theater and they were part of, you know, our group and, you know, we would film them or go to their performances. Um, and after I did the Income and Wealth show, then Jenny Holzer and I became friends and, and we did the manifesto show together at Five Billy Curve with Robert Cooney sort of helping bringing in a bunch of people that were in squats. Um, and then Robin did the dog show about the same time. And then, um, then I guess, then I did, actually Barbara S. came to me and she and Jane Sherry, and, or Jane Sherry came and she, Barbara S. and Virginia Purcell did one called, they put out a magazine called Just Another Asshole, so they had a show just another asshole show. <laughs> so, and then Michael McClard did 93 Grand Street, which, you know, a bunch of people were in the same group. Michael was actually instrumental in sort of, I think, really sort of getting people organizing around this, you know, let's do something together. And um, came up with the first idea to call it Green Corporation after money, but the unfortunately the name was Tankin, so we had to switch it. That's how Colab came about. Um, somebody suggested, you know, Colab collaborative projects. We voted Michael as president for the beginning because they had done the sort of initial thing and Michael talked a lot. <laughs> you know, Betsy could have been president, but I don't think she wanted to. And then we elected the Every, we decided that everybody could have one term, one year basically, or a year and a half, and then we would switch. And so then, Be and then Beth B became the second president. I became the third president uh, during the Times Square show, and then um, Walter Robinson became the fourth president. And then I think Mitch Corver was the last one. <laughs> it's been rumored, you know, that maybe. The, he embezzled the money, but I doubt it. But <laughs> that was the end of the funding for Cola. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Liza Bear had a Center for New York Activities, and she had helped us get, you know, we ran the first grant application through her mm. thing. And the way we did the grants was just everybody had to work on them. You know, we had to contribute. I have these books here where, you know, everybody just sent in their resumes and the pages on what they're working on and we would just send that to like a huge uh, book to and then NISCA and NEA to try to get grants from them. And in the beginning we put our own money in. Like we also did three live cable shows for several years, probably five or six years. Started out with All Color News in 77, and um, which we all paid for ourselves in the beginning. We would just go around the neighborhood and the community and film stuff that wouldn't necessarily be in the news. Either too political or too raunchy or landlords burning down buildings, things like that. And then we did another live show called Potato Wolf in which anybody could work on any of it. They just had to sign up. We filmed it all in ETC in Manhattan. Uh, it was now Manhattan Neighborhood Network, but it used to be called ETC Studios. And we would just rent a half an hour live. Just people that signed up would show up. We would all crew it, <laughs> do the mixing, the directing, the shooting, the writing, whatever. And I think out of it, we've got about 100 tapes, cold out tapes. Alan Moore and like after sort of collab was sort of slowing down in 81, um, he started collecting the tapes and started the Monday, Wednesday, Friday club with the tapes and other tapes. But Alan and I figured out there's probably about a hundred collab, our collab tapes that are group, they're jointly owned by the group. Yeah, were, were they archived in, yeah, in well, the fails or? No, they're in Alan's storage and Staten Island, and we've been trying to figure out, you know, what to do with them, but there's so many, and they're all three-quarter inch humanity, and it's like, you know, the money it would cost, to, we 
transferred a few things, but it's mm -hmm. it's really. Do you have any, uh, you you can just watch them yourself. Your, yourself. Well, we transferred some of them. We put some on YouTube, but mostly they're you know they're there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a lot of work to get to electronic them. arts in your mix to 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 do them. Although. And then we'd have to go back and get grants, and who wants to do that? Uh -huh. <laughs>